Welcome one and all to another fine Vundablog.com podcast in association with Poutpuckerpow.com I am Steven Escudero And I'm Danielle, you don't need to know my last name Sorry, I'm fancy, I'm like James Bond <laughs> you, you, it, you, People want to know my name and I Your have to give it, I have to so give it all of them It's better than mine, so No, it's not, no it's fun. It's not as good as Logan's, though, because his last name is nothing at all except for the gasp and moan of your nerd cum in mm-hmm. theaters, because it was amazing. It was very impressive. I was not expecting it to be as good as it was. We're going to talk about The Wolverine. Right now will be our non-spoiler segment of the review, so if you guys haven't seen The Wolverine, right now you're safe. We're only going to talk about the first 15 minutes or so. And uh, we're just going to give you, like, our general feelings on the movie. Yes. Um, I came into this movie with extremely low expectations. I'm a huge X-Men fan. have loved the X-Men my entire life since I was watching the cartoons as a child. Um, I went to see the original uh, Brian Singer X-Men in 1999. saw that movie on opening weekend three times. I... I a different group of people, I'd grab them and be like, hey, let's go for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Because I loved the X-Men and I loved Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. And then the movies. X2 kept kept my hope alive that these could be good movies. And then X3 and X-Men Origins Wolverine really soured me on Fox's ability to pull together anything good with a franchise that I loved. And this movie totally makes me have faith in them again and makes me have faith that Brian Singer's X-Men Days of Future Past is going to be amazing. Well, let's hope. Let's hope. Since the first X-Men movie, I've been wanting to see Sentinels. And at Comic-Con, they had pictures of Sentinel heads that they were showing off to everybody. They had lots of Trask industry signs. This is exciting. So The Wolverine is actually what we're talking about, the film by James Mangold, Mm -hmm. who's a fancy, fancy, fancy man director. Done some fancy movies. He's a fancy man director. Yes, he's done fancy movies. He's done <laughs> real movies, not movies that in, that have pop and claws. He has done the movies that we know would be Walk the Line and uh, Girl Interrupted, Three Ten to Yuma. That was his big. Uh, That's a big one. Action movie. Three Ten to Yuma and Walk the Line would be his two most well-known movies. Um, and so yeah, he's very good at kind of that very big budget drama. I can I can see now realizing that it's three ten to Yuma. I also did night and day. That it, that he had like that he really gave that sort of little western feel very subconsciously. Yes. To this movie. Yes, it it did have a very sort of man out of man out of time, man out of you know situation sort of feel, being that Logan was like the only American besides this uh, the snake chick. Who I'm pretty sure wasn't an American. She was European of some kind. And he's he's worked with uh, with Wolverine before, but right after he was Wolverine, he worked with him on Kate and Leopold. That's right, he brought that Kate and Leopold magic. Are you talking about James Bangle? Yes, and he infused it into the Marvel Universe. Kate and Leopold is a great fucking time he's travel movie. He's worked with uh, Hugh Jackman more than once, I think, right? No, I don't know. Look for yourself. Maybe not. That's it. That's, this is the more than once, I think. This is the second time? I'm pretty sure. Okay. We're, we're, we're perusing IMDb as we do this. Because that's the only way to do this, you know, with a modicum of success. Or we could research beforehand. We were talking. researching beforehand. Our entire lives were spent researching this movie. Okay. Okay? Everything I learned about World War II, I learned in, rep- in preparation of watching this film. Okay? And learning that the only way to survive a nuclear bomb is to have a Wolverine on top of you, shielding you from all the hazardous radiation. I know that that's supposed to be uh, sort of like a comic image, an iconic comic image, but I just... To me, I'll just say, in terms of the first five minutes of the movie, is really not giving anything away because we see it in the credits. Mm-hmm. He protects um, Yoshida, the the main uh, powerful man who is offering Logan the gift of mortality. Of death. He saves him from he's Wolverine saves Yoshida from an atomic blast, the Nagasaki atomic blast. And I did I don't know I'm still. For me, I know it was about 50 years were, ago, were, but it's a little too soon for me to see the atomic bomb go off and people dying. People have fun fun consequences to to the horrible reality of millions of deaths. I mean, at least they treated it as respectfully as they could 
while still but using is it for it, a plot device. But is it more insensitive if you fa- if you make up a third bomb and a third fake city? Is well, that equally as insensitive, no, or is that no, less Steven, insensitive? Stephen, my point. No, it's not. My, my point is, is that to just see it at all is. I'm not saying. Why would they ever make that? Would be ten times because that's what comics do. They create no. stuff. What if they bomb Latveria? But the point is, Wolverine exists in sort of a realistic time. He li- he exists in sort of a place of realism. Marvel plays with real cities where DC makes all of them up. Yes, that's true. Um, one of the reasons why I like DC made up better places. Why I like DC better than Marvel. I know everyone's gonna punch me now, but um, I'm yeah. a, I'm a DC girl. I am. I'm but a DC anyway. guy, so but I'm still here with my hands wet from joy at seeing the Wolverine. That is creepy imagery. Anyway, uh, I think they dealt with it very respect as respectfully as they could while still using it as a plot device. Um, but I mean, you know, who am I to talk? Because ever since 9/11, all we've done is crash buildings and movies. So the first scene is Wolverine being uh, being getting taken out of like a POW camp. And and all these soldiers are about to or commit Harry Carry. Is that am I saying it right? Yes, Harry Carry. So okay, it's not like that. It's not Harry Carry. It's it not, could be Harry Carry. Could it be Harry Carry? Because I think <laughs> Harry Carry is the guy who shakes his head <laughs> in the Will Ferrell yeah, sketch. Yeah, the Will Ferrell sketch. Harry Harry Carry. Have you ever wondered what it's like to be a hot dog? <laughs> if I were a hot dog, I would want to be eat. I would eat myself because I'd be delicious with mustard. It's, it's it's Harry Carry. I think I think is my terrible Harry Caddy. So we Harry get to see Caddy. Yoshida as a young man, this creepy old guy that you saw in the trailer with like electric spine. Um, we get to see him as a young man, like almost about to kill himself, and then he kind of Wolverine stops him and saves him, and then Wolverine like basically like mm-hmm. takes care of him through nuclear fallout. I he, guess he protects him until it's safe to emerge from the. Uh, Which I think would be like well. thirty years. No, <laughs> or thirty days or something. People are living in thirty something now. It's. I know, but it's. But I don't know things about history. Well, you could argue that is why he was dying of cancer because of his exposure to. But it radiation. took so long because of his super science money, I guess. Yeah. For him to die from exactly. being a he's young been, man in World, exactly. World War Exactly, he's been keeping himself alive forever, um, and he got exposed to much less than a lot of other people did. Yeah. Um, Thanks to Wolverine. And some people never died of the cancer. Some people didn't die of the cancer. Some people were just mutated and had problems. And Anyway, let's not talk about that part. Let's talk about, <laughs> let's talk about the real mutations. Let's, let's talk about fake mutations. Let's talk about the like lizard tongues. Terrible after consequences of um, questionable <laughs> military tactics. Um, Come on, it's just Fat Man and Big Boy. Questionable. Don't hate the Fat Man. Questionable Don't hate the Big Boy. tactics. Um, anyway, how, no, how, so, how sucky is that? That they gave like the two biggest bombs, the two worst bombs. They had to name them after fat people to ruin ruin it for us fat guys. Fat man, little boy. Oh, it's little boy. I thought it was big boy. Isn't it little? It's little boy. It's probably little boy. Damn it! Why do they gotta infantilize the most dangerous thing? What in the world? are you talking about? I'm sorry. I can't. I can't get off this this real bomb you tangent. Really it's can't. so interesting. And it's not. This is not what this <laughs> is about. It's about the frigging Wolverine. I'm used to derailing George and r- running podcasts through tables. Well, please don't derail this because you know. Anyway. Okay. So then, uh, so then Wolverine wakes up, and he wakes up into a fantasy dream. With Jean Grey, and then what's up? Another fucking twist. Wolverine fucking let himself go and looks like shit and does not have a nice house. Wolverine, after this is supposed to take place after X Men: The Last Stand, so he has just killed Jean in order to protect the rest of the world. So he is not in a good place. He has sworn off violence, and he's living in the woods with a bear. (laughs) And he's become a bear. Wolverine and the bear. He looks like the sexiest hobo. Wolverine, you left your food on the floor again. I told you to clean it out of the cave. Bear, stop giving me a hard time. It's not since BJ and the Bear in the seventies has there been such a great sitcom. <laughs> BJ and the Bear. Yeah, it was a real it was a real sitcom in the seventies. BJ and the Bear. Look it up. You'll see. I'm not making this up. Yeah. I think it was about a Hispanic guy and a bear hanging out together. I've never seen it. I've only heard about it. So all you BJ and the Bear fans, write to Vundablog.com. Demand that we review every episode. BJ okay? and the Bear. This is a thing. 
Hey, it is a comedy. BJ is my friend. But he's not a bear. Oh, he's a bear. There were 48 episodes. Yeah, 48. That's right. 48 episodes for something called BJ and the Bear. And I hope that bear gave a lot of It was about him and a chimpanzee named Bear. It was a chimpanzee named Bear? Yes. Well, the title's misleading. I think that's the point. That's not fair. So he's living with this bear, and then he sees these fucking douchebag hunters, okay, who go freaking uh, crazy with kill rage. How much spot? How much Fuck up his thing? shit. There's only the first 15 minutes of the movie. Okay. Spoiler alert. No, not yet. I'm not getting there yet. I'll spoil it later. So you get to see Wolverine, like, versus, like, the way he thinks about hunting versus the way these people think about hunting, and you get to really see his hunter's thing. From this moment forward, the spoilers will begin. You should see this movie. We both enjoyed it a lot. Overall review for you, for the people who are going to leave now? Overall review for me is, you know, don't go into it with too many expectations, just so that you don't... I don't want to hype you up, because when you hype people up, then they're like, what are you talking about? That was terrible. But it really was um, very different from what I was expecting. It was a very contained movie. It didn't have tons of huge, flashy fly around the world set pieces it didn't have a lot of you know here are eight thousand people you know coming in to talk for one minute and then leaving it was very centralized to wolverine and the few characters in the plot um sort of the ripples of a previous life he had affecting his life now and how it affected the people that grew up around this ripple by saving this this dude yoshida he kind of created these ripples and how these ripples affected everyone and himself and make a big splash. Now, I, I thought the movie was about three themes. Um, I'm going to share these themes with the audience. The first theme was obviously death. The second theme was either bears and or animals. <laughs> and the third theme was sucking off. There's a lot of sucking in this movie. Okay? Sucking away of powers. Sucking away of poisons. All right? Lots and lots of sucking in this movie, but none of it is done at the expense of the plot because the plot is fucking awesome. This movie was... I went in with such low expectations that now my expectations have crescendo risen, okay, to give this movie such fantastically positive positive vibes. I want you to give this movie positive vibes. Give it positive dollars. Show Fox that if they don't... That even when they... Even, when they produce crap, it can make money, yeah, sure. But when they produce something good, it deserves to make double that money so that they don't realize that their crap is actually crap. Because I've supported all of the X-Men movies and have been saddened afterwards for having supported them. And this time, I'm actually happy to have supported them. I'm happy to have given them my money. So now spoilers for The Wolverine. And hopefully, we don't annoy you by talking about Fat Man and Little Boy again. Uh, so...